So, I am a docent here with the CFA. Uh, I run telescopes up on the roof for observatory night. I've been doing that for a couple years. Uh, I also take a lot of pictures on my own. Uh, if you've been coming to observatory night for a little while, you may remember I gave a talk, I think it was last year, on uh, astrophotography with a camera and a tripod. Uh, tonight I'm going to talk about astrophotography with a small telescope. What I have here is a German equatorial mount. Uh, this is the sort of mount that I put my telescope on, and uh, it is aligned with uh, the axis of the Earth. So uh, as the Earth turns, uh, if I'm pointing at the North Star, it stays pointed at the North Star. I put onto uh, this mount my little telescope, which I will get out just a moment here. This is the telescope I use. Not all that big, is it? And with my telescope, I take my camera, which I'm going to uh, show you here. This is just a digital camera. It's not an expensive CCD. So this is a normal camera. Instead of putting a lens on it, I put on this thing, uh, which is called a T-adapter. And I put it on as though it were a lens. And then I can slide it right into the telescope. And now the telescope itself acts like the camera's lens. So this is how I do almost all of my imaging. Uh, so the first thing to do when uh, you want to go out and take pictures is decide what you want to take a picture of. And to do that, I bring up a program that I have over here called Stellarium. It's free. You can get it for Windows, Linux, Mac, whatever. And uh, this is a special landscape I've set up that looks just like the roof. So this is what the night sky looks like tonight. Uh, you'll see it in uh, just a few minutes. And you see I can, uh, let's see, I can look all around the sky. Uh, the uh, building is actually aligned north-south, so... Uh, that makes things pretty easy when you're here. And right now, you see, it looks like a bunch of stars. You can't really tell what's what. But with Stellarium, I can turn on all sorts of nice features. I can turn on the outlines of the constellations, their names, and I can tell it to show me what special objects are visible? So let's take this one as an example. Uh, this is, uh, if I can click on it here. Yes, I will show you that in just a moment. Uh, this is M13. It's a globular cluster in Hercules. And if we zoom in, We see it looks like that. So I can say, wow, you know, that looks pretty interesting. I think I'm going to take a picture of that. And then I go over to my telescope mount, and I tell it, I want to look at M13. And it points to it for me, and it tracks it across the sky. Uh, the sky actually rotates faster than you'd think. Uh, when you're just looking up at the night sky, everything looks like it's staying in the same place. It's actually moving a degree every four minutes. So you have to have a mount that moves just the same as the sky 
in order to take a long exposure picture. And uh, we had a request to see the Andromeda Galaxy. And yeah, it's having a little trouble. It wants to connect to the internet uh, to uh, look at the symbol. And it's still moving. There we are. So I have to zoom out because the Andromeda galaxy is really big. Uh, it's about three degrees wide, uh, which uh, the moon is about half a degree. So this is about six times the size of the full moon. It's just dim enough that we can't see it from Cambridge like this. So, uh, now I'd like to show you some of the pictures that I have taken uh, recently. We'll get out of Stellarium and come over here. Okay. So, this is the moon, of course. Uh, this is one of the things that we're likely to look at tonight up on the roof. Uh, you can see up along the uh, top right edge, uh, you can see some of the craters because this isn't a perfectly full moon. Uh, when it's not quite full, you can still see some definition on the craters. This is a double star called Albireo, one of my favorites. Uh, it's two stars. One is yellow, the other is orange, uh, sorry, blue. And uh, they're about 460 light years away from Earth. Now, Albireo was kind of a mystery for a long time uh, because if you look at the picture, the yellow star looks like it is bigger and brighter than the blue star. Now, they're at the same distance, and blue is a brighter, hotter color than yellow. So, what was going on here? In 1976, astronomers at Kitt Peak uh, pointed a speckle interferometer, which is a type of astronomical device, at Albireo and figured out that the yellow star is actually two yellow stars. And they're just so close that we couldn't tell them apart. Uh, this is the Ring Nebula. Uh, which I took with this telescope here. Uh, you may be able to see it uh, has a bit of color. Uh, there's an outer red shell that doesn't show up so well on my camera, and an inner uh, sort of blue-green shell. The outer shell is ionized hydrogen, which shows up red, and the inner shell is ionized oxygen, which shows up blue-green. Right in the very middle, there is this remnant of a star that is no longer a star. And there's just the tiniest little point of light uh, right where it is. Uh, when you look at the Ring Nebula through the telescopes upstairs, though, because your eye is not a long exposure camera, uh, it will look gray. So, just so you know, that's what it's supposed to look like. <laughs> this is M13, the cluster that I was showing off earlier. It is uh, a favorite uh, target for astrophotographers. Uh, it's big, it's fun to look at. There are lots of stars in there. This is another uh, thing that we might look at tonight. This is the double cluster. Uh, it is uh, near Perseus and Cassiopeia. Uh, the two clusters aren't related to each other, but they're just nearby each other. Uh, this is another fun one to look at. Just, well, there are a lot of stars. Here we go, the Andromeda Galaxy. <laughs> and I took this picture with this telescope. The, uh, 
the technology that's available today uh, with the telescopes we have, the cameras that we have, the mounts we have, a century ago, they would have killed to get this stuff. <laughs> so there are actually three galaxies in this picture. There's the Andromeda galaxy, which is the big one. Uh, there's uh, M33, uh, sorry, M32, uh, and M110. Uh, this is one of them here, and the other is up top there. Uh, this is uh, two nebulae. Uh, one of them is called the North America Nebula. I think you can see why. Uh, the other is called the Pelican Nebula, and it's a little harder to see that. <laughs> Astronomers get a little creative when they name things. There's a lot of sort of willful seeing. Uh, well, I think this looks sort of like a pelican, so we'll call it that. And again, that, this is a picture I took with that telescope and that camera. Uh, about three minutes. Oh, I actually took uh, several three-minute pictures, and then I stacked them all on top of each other. Uh, that helps to get rid of noise in the picture and uh, enhance the uh, image. Do you take pictures during the daytime? Uh, I have taken some pictures of the sun, but that's about all you can see during the day, and I don't find it all that exciting. <laughs> but what's important here is this is very small equipment, and every year I get many phone calls. Uh, you know, I need to buy a big telescope. I want to do this and that. And what I want to show you is this. This is very affordable, and if you want to learn more about astrophotography and processing images, just look in Astronomy Magazine. <laughs> Uh, I'm doing raw. Now, this is a fun picture, and I'm glad that we had the talk that we did tonight. The object that I've circled there in blue is an asteroid. It's called Vesta. It's the fourth asteroid that was discovered. And back in the spring, uh, I sat out with my telescope uh, for a good hour taking pictures of Vesta. Oh, and down here, this is M35. It's a cluster. Uh, so I sat out for an hour taking pictures of Vesta, and then I put them all together and made a movie of them. And what we're going to do is we're going to watch, and you'll see Vesta will move up between those two stars above it. And you can actually see it move over the course of an hour. So, any second now, this will start to play. <laughs> Says it will. There we go. Ah. Okay, well, that didn't play as smoothly as I would have liked, but <laughs> still. Uh, this is a comet. This is one of the comets that was mentioned earlier. This is Comet Pan-STARRS. And uh, you can see that there are two tails on it. So this one is pointed away from the sun. That's the dust tail. Uh, this one is pointed along the path, uh, sorry, the ion tail, rather. Uh, this is pointed along the path the comet has been on, and that's the dust tail. Now this is the Pleiades. Now, uh, this is a picture I took yesterday morning. To the seven sisters of Atlas. And uh, a lot of dust cloud, a lot of remains uh, of material as they're forming. They're young stars. They may not have been visible during the time the dinosaurs walked the Earth. But uh, you can see it. It's up in the sky near Orion. It looks like a little dipper. Sometimes people mistake it for a little dipper. 
And uh, yeah, so this is one of the pictures that I took yesterday morning. Uh, this is the other. So this is the Orion Nebula. It isn't quite up at a convenient time yet, but it's coming. Uh, well, for most of my pictures, I'm just using a light pollution filter. Uh, I'm trying to cut down on the uh, street lights, uh, any ambient lighting that is man-made. Uh, and that's what I used for this picture and all the others that I've shown. Even for the colors? Hmm? Their colors are real? Though. Yes. By chance, try to catch Mars going through the uh, beehive recently. Uh, no, I haven't tried Mars uh, recently. Uh, I'm blocked to nearly 90 degrees to the east, so it's uh, kind of tricky getting uh, some of the things in the early morning. And then this is my last picture. This is actually not one that I took, uh, but this is something that a uh, fellow that I know who's named Matthew uh, took. Uh, out in Salem uh, a few months back with a camera and a lens that is not much bigger than this telescope. He uh, held his camera. He, was, he didn't have it on a tripod. He was holding it in his hands and pointing it at the International Space Station as it flew over. Oh, wow. And in one 250th of a second, you can see this sort of detail. James, thank home. you. Thank you. How far from your home do you go to set it up? Uh, I actually set up at home uh, outside of Lowell, so I have a fair amount of light pollution to worry about. Uh, I, most times I don't go traveling too far. Uh, and when I set up, uh, I actually have a street light at the end of the driveway. So I have to set up in the shadow of the telephone pole. <laughs> <laughs> Remember, as Thomas Edison said, inspiration, success is 90% perspiration, 10% inspiration. Perspiration, if you want to succeed, you can with simple, easy equipment. James, thank you.